My name is Chris Conover and I'm a UX engineer at Google. And my name is Pratik and I'm a designer at Google. If you're interested in turning your ideas into a real experience running on an actual device, then this video is for you. This is the second part in our series on prototyping. Melissa and Miriam talked about sketching and paper prototyping. In this video, we're going to talk about digital prototyping. Digital prototyping is the process of exploring an idea by building an interactive experience. Explaining abstract ideas and words can be tough. By creating an interactive design artifact that other people can experience themselves, your ideas become real. Digital prototypes are very helpful when you're pitching an idea, trying to explain the design detail to an engineer, or running user studies to validate your designs. Best of all, they don't require you to know how to code, which makes it fast and easy to explore many different ideas. You know, in a way, digital prototypes are a lot like building models that architects create. An architect creates a model because it gives their client an idea of what the finished building will look like without hiring a construction crew and breaking ground. We use digital prototypes to build experiences that look and behave like the final app without using costly engineering time. Over the last few years, we've seen a lot of new digital prototyping tools enter the market. They each have their own unique set of features and priorities. Some tools focus on helping you build out the basic flow of your app, while others are more geared towards exploring small interactions. Today, we're gonna to take a closer look at two of these tools and see how they can be applied to our work. To give some background, our team is working on a fictional e-commerce app and has produced sketches and mocks showing the different screens. These artifacts have given the team a pretty good idea of what we're trying to build, but we wanted to have something that could be shown to stakeholders or used to test with users. I created a digital prototype to demonstrate the basic flow of our e-commerce app. As you can see, we have the home screen of our e-commerce app, and I can do things like scroll through the product feed to go shopping, and then I can come up here and look at this carousel of different products, and I can horizontally scroll, and I see this clock here. Let's say I wanna um, look into this clock and find out more about it. I can simply tap this card, and we'll transition to the product detail page where we have a description about what the product is, and we can also take the action to add it to our cart. So by tapping this fab button, we'll get a toast here that confirms that this Swiss railway clock has been added to my cart, and I can go back to the home screen. So to make this prototype, I used a tool called Principle. I'd like to show you a few of the features that made it easy to create it. Don't worry about understanding everything I'm doing. This isn't meant to be a tutorial, but rather to expose you to the possibilities of this tool. So here we are in Sketch, and we can see we have the static versions of our designs. Now we can import them into Principle by switching over to Principle and clicking the Import button. And now you see that the designs we had in Sketch are now present in Principle. This is really great because each design object that we had to control over in Sketch is now available inside of Principle. So you can see inside the layer list, we have access to all these different cards and different content pieces. We notice in the preview that we can't scroll anything. So the first step to making this prototype feel a bit more real is to add the ability to scroll. The way I do this is I'll click the content group, which is just this section right here. And under the vertical dropdown, I'll simply select scroll. So now when we head over to our preview window, you'll notice that we can scroll the content vertically. And we can apply the same kind of thinking to this card carousel here, which we want to scroll horizontally. So we'll select the card carousel, and then under the horizontal dropdown, we'll switch it from static to scroll. So as you can see, when I make that change, it updates my preview automatically. And so now we can test out scrolling. So we can scroll down, and now we can also scroll across. So our prototype's starting to feel a little more real because we have scrolling enabled. But now we need to figure out a way to get from this initial screen to the product detail page. So we're gonna talk about how to add a tappable target that transitions to a new screen. So what we'll do first is we'll select the card that we wanna make tappable. And in this case, we're gonna select our clock. And then we can click this little lightning bolt and it'll show us a list of events that we can listen to. And we just want a basic tap, so when you tap this card, it will transition to the next screen. So this artboard is our detail page, so I'm dragging and then I'll just release, and we'll have a basic transition. So now let's try this out. When I scroll down and scroll over, and then I click the clock, you'll notice that it automatically switches to this new view, and it did a nice little transition of the uh, clock graphic to go up. And this all happened automatically, which is a really nice feature of principle. 
So now that we've created one tap target, let's go ahead and do another one to make it possible to add this product to our cart. So again, I'll select this add to cart button or fab and I'll click the lightning bolt again and then I can again choose tap and I'll just drag it to the next artboard. And what this will do is it will make us transition to the screen where this confirmation toast here will appear. So when we test this out, I can click this button and now the toast appears. And this confirmation is great, but the last thing we need to do is make it disappear. So for it to feel realistic, it needs to come into view, tell the user that they've successfully added the item to their cart, and then it should disappear. So here we are on our page, and when we click this, you'll see that the toast comes up and then it disappears. So the way we're doing that is we can add uh, an automatic transition to the artboard right here, auto, and when it's done animating, it will switch back to the previous state. And if we click on this transition up here, we can see in our animation panel that we can control the duration of the toast using this property here. And so what we can do is we can make this longer. And when we go back and test this out, you'll notice that it takes a little while for it to like come up and it's a slower transition. So to fix that, we'll just drag it back to where we had it at about a third of a second. And we can see that it animates in and then it animates out. And the way we have it pause on that screen is we have this other animation drawn out to two seconds. And I just wanna point out that as I'm making these changes in here on this app and using the preview, it's also updating live on my phone at the same time. So if I, again, shorten this uh, duration here, we'll notice that it also works on the phone. I can set that back and there it is. So with a little work, we were able to quickly get a feel for how our app will work and have an artifact that can be used to test with users or communicate transition ideas with other members of the team. We've only scratched the surface of what Principal can do. So if any of this seems useful to you, I would encourage you to visit www.principalformac.com to learn more. There are many other prototyping tools that can be used to achieve similar results. In our next video, my colleague Partik will demonstrate prototyping and interaction using a tool called Form. As you've seen, Chris created a basic prototype of navigating through our e-commerce app and adding an item to the cart. Using Chris's prototype made the team question if there might be a more efficient way of adding an item to the cart without navigating to the product detail page. To begin my exploration, I started off by working with the screens we had and thinking about how we could incorporate this feature. I wanted to create something more interactive and gestural since we're working on mobile. My initial thought was to open Sketch and design the flow of this interaction there. But it's hard to convey motion, gestures, and the overall experience of this interaction in a static format. Since the scope of this work is narrow and gesture-based, I decided to use Form to create an interactive prototype. Form is a node-based prototyping tool for iOS and Mac. Here's the homepage of the e-commerce app. You can tap and hold on a card to make it draggable. Then you can drag it over the cart icon to add it to the cart. Once you let go, the carousel at the top shifts over, indicating that the radio card has been added to the cart. This prototype clearly communicates my design to others. Form also lets me share this with anyone by simply shaking the device. Let's take a look at how you would build something like this. You start by connecting a series of patches together to create functioning prototypes. Patches are little chunks of logic that can be connected together. A patch can take in a value through its inputs and then output the modified value. For example, let's take a look at how panning the radio card works. Starting from left, we have the pan gesture, which is connected to my radio card image. I use this patch to add the ability to pan things around. The gesture outputs the X and Y pan, which correspond to the position of the touch on the screen. So to move the card, let's say on the X axis, I take the X pan output, put it through a spring patch which animates the value, and then input that value into the X position of the image patch, since I want the card to follow the position of my touch. That's a quick overview of Form. If you're interested in learning more, check out the tutorials at relativewave.com. Today we took a brief look at two digital prototyping tools, but there are many more out there. I urge you to try out several to find the one that fits into your workflow. Don't miss the next part of our series where you'll learn about native prototyping.